So I'm Eshara Fonseca, I'm from Yenlo. A little introduction, I'm, I've been with Yenlo for four years, 14 years of experience with WSO2, uh, and I worked in technology, banking, and finance space. Matthias? Uh, and I'm Matthias Yoshik, I'm from the corporate IT of Gibru Device. Um, I've been with Gibru Device for 12 years now, working in IT for 12 years, and using the WSO2 products in our IT for about eight years, yes, eight years. Yep. So, a little introduction. <laughs> Device is the oldest transport and logistics company in the world. Even in the transport and logistics sector, the customers are getting more and more savvy regarding information security, regarding the communication to their partners. So we have the added pressure of delivering reliable uh, information in a secure manner to our customers. The Connect platform provided us with a lot of opportunities going forward. We can provide services now on a business level and focus on the quality of those and not on the quality of the service beneath that. So, um, just a quick introduction from our company side. Uh, we are in the transport and logistics uh, space. We are still a very small company, but we are a very old company, so we are more than 300 years old. We have uh, around 8,600 employees at the moment. 400 of those are working in IT. Um, we have a lot of transport, a lot of locations worldwide. We also have locations here in North America, in Chicago. Um, we started in 2016 in Chicago, and we now have 11 locations in North America, including some in Canada. Um, yeah. You want some more? Yes. Ah, yeah. So um, I just wanted to put these words out there because I know most of you resonate with these words as well. So things like isolated systems, uh, data visibility, operational cost, creating efficiency. I think these are challenges that everybody in every in industry pretty much faces. Um, so same goes for Gebru device. And I think um, these challenges uh, are one of the reasons why you're here, because you're looking at WSO2 technology or using WSO2 technology to resolve some of them. So with our size and our uh, many locations all over the world, um, we face those challenges as well, also with our customers and partners. So uh, we needed to get faster. We needed, everyone wants their solution yesterday. Mm -hmm. Nobody can wait for anything anymore. Um, everything has to be more economical, cost, uh, the costs for everything are rising. Um, for us it was uh, integrating more and more customers that are getting more and more tech savvy and want to integrate and automate their, uh, their transport and logistics processes uh, was challenging to, to deliver it. Um, in our, we are, since the 80s, Around the 80s, we started with uh, using electronic data interchange with our customers and partners. Um, and we did everything very customized for every customer. So uh, he tells us, my system will be sending this, and it will need this one back. And we did it. We, did, we still do that, but we needed a way to manage it more, uh, more economically and more professionally. Also, since we do this since a long time, with the underlying legacy technologies, there's security risk, also some risk of exposing data to people who should not see the data, uh, especially if you have more and more and more integrations in one, in, in one space. So with these challenges, I, I just wanted to put this um, quote from the CEO of Microsoft up there. Uh, in the age of digital transformation, those who adapt quickly and innovate relentlessly will thrive. And the highlighted words are adapt and innovate. And I want to highlight these words because 
uh, this is the essence of the Gebruder Weiss success story and um, their, move, their transformation and move towards digital WSO2 technology and cloud. Um, so uh, I think not only did Gebruder Weiss identify the need for technology and innovation, but also their focus was on uh, improving their customer experience, improving operational efficiency, um, and moving towards a bigger vision to adapt and innovate. And this is where I think uh, we partnered with um, Gebruder Weiss as well. And uh, Yenlo and Gebruder Weiss, we've been partners for um, over seven years now. Uh, and we've done a lot of work together. We've um, um, worked on many challenges together. And I think we're going to talk about some of them as well and uh, the journey of Gebruder Weiss. So for a quick overview of our digital journey, um, we started back in 2016 where, we, uh, where our customer solutions department had the vision of building out a self-service portal for our customers so that even smaller customers uh, were able to get real-time data without having a dedicated system on their side. Um, and when we saw that these uh, requirements are coming for us in, in the IT department, we said, yeah, but let's build a robust platform underneath it so that it is possible to iterate fast so that we do not have our old, um, quite slow processes uh, underneath that. And uh, that's why we were starting with the requirements for our platform where we then identified WSO2 products as a possible way to go and also started to do that. And then we will come into the details of the rest of the uh, of the journey a little bit later. Um, so uh, let's see how it went about. Back when uh, we, we saw that uh, we wanted to build a new platform for, um, for our new uh, portal, uh, we had some immediate issues that we had to address first. For us it was how do we um, keep integration efforts to a minimum, how can we um, allow uh, people to communicate with our network without uh, having to expose a lot of our uh, internal systems, um, how can we go about identity management as well, so how can we onboard external users into our identity process, processes. So then we started formulating our transformation strategy we tried to, uh, tried to select the uh, right technology and solutions. Um, we did dedicated projects where we were comparing um, available solutions back in 2016 and landed on WSO2 as, a, as the perfect product back then. Um, we started using WSO2 as open source products. Um, I will also show a slide where you will see how we integrated it in, in our, in our uh, on-premise data center. Yeah, it's not, not that big of a deal. Um, and uh, yeah, we, back then, uh, we also needed a partner for, for our journey. Uh, and we found Yenlo, with, with, uh, with, which offered us trainings back then so that we can get up and running quite quickly. And uh, then we had the challenges of how do we do API management and how do we do security and access management for our portal. So all of you might be similar uh, with the first three phases. The first phase is you need to know what you want to do and how you want to do it. Then you need to do it, and then you try to keep it up and running. For us, um, after we did those three phases, there was another phase where we said, OK, we need to have some more possibilities. Um, we also need to consider going to, uh, to a cloud uh, service. So um, WSO2 on-premise was for us uh, the possibility to uh, enhance our API-based integration capabilities. So for internal developers that they can connect all our internal systems uh, very easily and very fast. Um, it was also a possibility for us to offer customers and partners APIs to connect to us. And it was also one way of using the built-in WSO2 developer portal to provide a single point of, uh, um, of truth for all the 
available integrations that we have in our internal environment. So first we started off with the open source products. Um, so it was quite easy. Uh, it is in our own data centers. We have our own two data centers. Um, and we had our own internal applications just accessing all of the WSO2 products and APIs. The challenge here was uh, we also had external users, external identity providers, uh, and the, the need for more and more external connections uh, grew. But still, we had a lot of success with WSO2 here. Um, we managed to standardize a lot of APIs internally. We managed to simplify all the communication about all our integrations. We managed to simplify the integrations themselves with standard technologies, so every connection has the same authentication method. Um, they are all documented in the same way. Uh, and we also had better insights on which systems were talking to each other, because we have a lot of internal systems, small ones, big ones, all are connected to each other and all share data. Um, and this was the first time we were able to uh, visualize how and how often they t do talk to each other. There were some challenges during the journey, um, especially with setting up the environment, so um, keeping up three different environments for testing or pre-production and production, uh, keeping, up, uh, keeping them separated, making sure that nothing leaks from one uh, segment to the next. Also, uh, keeping WSO2 products up and running and keep them up to date. Um, we've heard it yesterday, we've heard it in the tutorials. Um, migrating WSO2 products can be a challenge. Um, so we also face that. Um, also, allocating all the resources, may it be hardware, may it be uh, human resources, was quite challenging as we are a small team building the platform. Um, what was uh, also a challenge, uh, but we did face it quite nice, uh, is uh, optimizing the deployment processes, so staging of APIs from one, one, one stage to another. Um, we were able to build on that even when we went on to the cloud solution. And of course, how do you improve operational efficiency? How do you make sure everything runs all the time, it auto heals, it monitors, etc. So, Matthias talked, talked about the stabilization phase. I think from the four phases, phase three, uh, that's after the initial on-prem deployment. And uh, he also talked about the challenges, and most of those challenges came up during that phase, I believe. Um, because um, I think overall, the problem was that Matthias and his team were spending a lot more time than necessary working on the platform, managing it, maintaining it, rather than uh, focusing on their business, the business objectives, and so on. So this is where Yenlo stepped in, and uh, we were able to give a solution which is fully managed and hosted on a cloud. So that's the start to their cloud journey. Um, so this platform that we called Connext at Yenlo. Uh, so it's a managed services uh, solution that we offer, and it's 24, it has 24-7 uh, support. Um, it's a single unified uh, platform. So um, how we helped with the cloud migration initially was, uh, so with the platform, we uh, created um, automated deployments, automated environments. Um, and there were no manual configurations or deployments at any point. And all this was automatically tested as well extensively during the process, which made the migration to the cloud much easier. And the migration itself is a challenge and an a issue that we usually hear from uh, customers. Uh, not just the cloud migration, but also like product version migrations and so on. And it's not just about WSO2, I think it's the same for any on-premise solution. Um, so this process becomes much easier with the uh, platform that we offer because of the whole automated processes, automated testing and so on. And I think uh, the benefit they get is um, 
because the process is so much easier and it's handled by Yenlo, uh, there's a team that supports them with these migrations. They're able to stay up to date in terms of product versions and infrastructure and also have like a secure platform. Um, and also, so there's seamless support uh, given end-to-end. -end. The platform itself, it takes care of the infrastructure, it takes care of the middleware components, the um, WSO2 products, the artifacts, and any customizations as well. So when we provide support, it's uh, provided like, it's global support, and we also onboard uh, all these customizations, artifacts, and uh, the components into our support organizations so that we can, uh, so that we're not really dependent a lot on uh, the customer. We are able to independently resolve certain issues as well, and, uh, you know, uh, let them spend mo their, more, most of their time on uh, the business that's important to them. Um, so when it comes to support, the other thing is, I think together we uh, do regular operational meetings, tactical meetings, strategical meetings, where we uh, discuss about like potential risks and uh, fine-tuning, best practices. Um, Future plans. Yes, and uh, we, we use them for continuous improvement. So that's the kind of support they get um, by moving to the cloud, by moving to this managed platform. Um, and I think one important area uh, when they make the decision to uh, go to the cloud is security and compliance. So uh, the platform that we offered, it's, it follows a zero trust policy. Uh, it's bi-directionally encrypted as well. And um, at an infrastructure level, there's advanced security. And also there's like a single centralized uh, security and policy enforcement point um, from the pa platform. And Yenlo is also uh, an ISO 27001 certified company, which means uh, the internal processes, are customer engagements, the platforms, um, and everything we do follows uh, security standards and uh, compliance and, and uh, follows compliance processes. Um, and with cloud, I think uh, the other area that's interesting to them is uh, scalability and flexibility. So the platform itself is able to uh, auto scale and auto heal. So based on um, their requirements and how they want to uh, go about with business, they're able to configure it and use those capabilities. Uh, so when it comes to flexibility, another uh, point is that, um, so uh, if Gebruder Wise wants to introduce a new product or um, maybe add a new environment, uh, the fact that they have um, the platform, the fact that they have uh, these automated processes, CI/CD pipelines, test scripts, and everything, um, makes um, setting up these environments, setting up, up these con components much easier uh, because uh, everything's automated. And, and this is a problem that we generally see when we work with customers, uh, and especially when you're migrating and you have to create a new environment, uh, you need approvals, you need uh, to allocate servers, and you need to figure out uh, uh, contracts and all these things. But uh, I think um, by moving to the cloud and moving to this managed platform, they eliminated most of those uh, um, factors. So I think they have very high time, uh, go-to-market uh, time uh, because of uh, this. So, uh, and also, I think the last point is about cost optimization. So um, they're able to optimize and manage their cost in terms of uh, uh, infrastructure, in terms of the way they run the WSO2 components. And also, they don't have to have a full in-house team managing the platform 24-7 because uh, it's taken care of uh, by the partner, by the platform, and um, it's a collaboration, basically. So, um, all those benefits were one of the reasons we chose Yenlo, they're not, not the only ones. Um, mm -hmm. So, for us, uh, when we uh, adopted Connext as a platform, we set it up as an, an additional layer outside of our uh, data center. 
So uh, we still have everything in-house regarding the backends, regarding some of the user stores, but we also have Connect in front of it where we have, uh, we do have a requirement due to some other software that we have a custom user store that's an LDAP instead of the built-in identity manager user store. So Yendler was kindly kind enough to provide that to us as well inside their platform. Um, and we also had the requirement of getting out uh, a developer portal. So our own branded developer portal to give customers and partners access to our standard APIs that we wanted to provide. So um, by building up this solution, um, we uh, have, we also had some challenges um, that we had while building up the solution. So the key areas were the connectivity, how do you go about uh, connecting all the systems, how to go about keeping them up, what do you do if uh, connectivity is down, if the connection is down? Uh, we also had our problem with the user store. We needed something uh, custom. We also had a challenge with the custom web apps. How do we get them out? How can we iterate fast on, on them? How do we do CI and CD with, uh, with our tools on a platform that's not in our control? And also, how do we go about the API lifecycle? So, um, it's, uh, it's already quite late in the presentation, so if you have questions regarding those challenges, please ask them right after. I won't go into detail for everyone now, so that uh, we can go into specific questions for those challenges. I can only tell you, we addressed all of them, and there's also one um, where I want to point out in the slide before. You see here there's an optional API gateway on-premise, um, so we are in the process of migrating our legacy systems on-premise into another gateway to, to make sure that we can use the identity provider or the identity server in Connex as a key manager for our internal traffic as well and use uh, JOT, uh, so JOT, um, JSON Web Tokens, uh, with a trusting uh, relationship between our on-premise gateways with the ident identity server to Mitigate, for example, if our internet connection is down, we can still have on-premise traffic through the gateway. Yeah, um, as I said, we have five minutes left, so I think uh, I'll skip the details of uh, these uh, slides. And we can go to what, was, what were the, the benefits for us adopting uh, the Connect Cloud. Um, so we Really now we focus on, on doing things in the WSO2 product, uh, WSO2 products and not focusing on building them, running them, maintaining them. We have optimized our internal resources, resources so my team is now free to do other things as well. Um, and we have a higher reliability than we had on premise because we had some issues with um, clustering due to uh, legacy requirements we had with our servers. And I think Ishara can also uh, attest to the other benefits we had. Yeah, I think we touched on a few others before about seamless scalability. And uh, then the platform itself has monitoring and analytics capabilities also, which helps them with uh, proactive and reactive decision making. So monitoring in terms of infrastructure, in terms of WSO2 components, the performance of APIs and all that. Uh, and there's... Uh, Minimize downtime. I think uh, there's uh, uh, the platform is uh, stable and uh, it, it has um, um, standard SLAs and governing um, SLAs that we provide to uh, Gebrudewise. So everything's being taken care of by Yenlo. And if there's an issue, we address it with uh, the shortest time possible. And there's also a knowledge base within Yenlo. We're not dependent on people, we're dependent on a support organization, which makes that process much easier as well. So, um, I mean, I think to wrap up, uh, what I want to say is that uh, together with Gebrudewise, with WSO2 and Yenlo, uh, we're very much committed to going along this journey uh, together to innovate, to uh, create more efficiency. And also, I think the most important factor is that uh, we want to create better customer value and customer experience for the Gebrudewise customers. That's true. And we have reached our time quite. Yeah, we're out of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.